guys. So hey, um, wanted to shoot this quick video for you, another case study of a deal that we just closed, uh, the property that went on the market, and we have a buyer who's really interested in buying it uh, from us. So I want to walk you through some of the paperwork and stuff that we used to get this transaction closed. This was uh, a short sale that I got referred to, um, and the homeowner was actually current on the loan, but was an out-of-town landlord, uh, didn't want the property anymore, and basically wanted to try to get out from underneath it. He was upside down as far as what the property was worth uh, versus what he owed, and he was upside down on a monthly basis on his mortgage payment versus what he was getting in rent. Um, so what we did is uh, basically got the lead, gave it to one of my listing agents. Uh, my agent listed the property, and uh, it kind of sat on the market for a while. There were no offers. So I thought, you know, this is a pretty good opportunity for an investment offer. I stepped in and made an offer on the house uh, to buy it. And uh, we, you know, disclosed to the bank that, uh, that, uh, that, you know, we had the listing and I was also uh, the buyer. And uh, what we did was we basically filled out this purchase agreement. Uh, this is dated for um, April 14th for $30,000. And uh, this is the offer that went in. Uh, we also used this uh, short sale addendum in case I made an offer on it and, uh, and couldn't buy it. And I had to step out of the transaction that we could get paid on an A to C closing. So for the last seven years or so, uh, we would step in and try to buy the property. And if we couldn't buy it, we would step out of the transaction. But we wanted the buyer to pay us basically a short sale facilitation fee uh, for you know getting the short sale negotiated, getting them a good deal. Um, so I had this addendum filled out basically saying that if I had to step out of the property that the buyer would pay me $5,000 for facilitating the short sale. I ended up not needing this even though I did get it signed. Okay, so we sent in the short sale package uh, to the lender we got all their you know, financial statements, uh, all that stuff on, into the bank, and it didn't take more than 30 days. The bank came out and did their, their uh, broker's price opinion of what the house was worth. Uh, the property was listed uh, for 55, I believe, at the time, and the BPO came back at 45, and the bank countered me and said, hey, we want 45,000 for the property. And I said, look, I'm not interested in paying 45. Uh, my offer is 30, I'm sticking at 30. Uh, if you wanna sell it, you know, I, uh, I'll, I'll buy it for 30 and after about maybe two weeks of uh, basically negotiating back and forth, the bank approved my offer at $30,000, okay? Um, so here's the actual HUD-1. We ended up closing on this property on uh, August 15th, paid $30,000 for it, and then there's also a short sale negotiation fee, which was paid by me. Because I'm the buyer, I ended up paying my short sale negotiator $1,250 uh, to negotiate the short sale. But I you know, got this house for $30,000, uh, had a tenant already in the property. And uh, you know, here on the table is the short sale approval letter. Uh, you can see right here from the bank, this is from Chase, uh, with all their short sale approval documents. This was approved under the HAFA program. Okay, under the half a program, and uh, so there was no, uh, you know, resale restrictions when I bought it. Uh, there was, you know, nothing preventing me from buying the property and selling it quickly. Um, but it was such a good deal, I didn't worry about, you know, lining up another buyer. I just got my private money lined up, and I bought the property and closed on it. Okay, uh, we also made sure that we, um, you know, disclosed to the lender that one of my agents was the listing agent and also I'm a principal, I'm an owner of the brokerage. So we disclosed that as well to the, uh, to the bank. And then, you know, here's the documents. I had my attorney review everything uh, to make sure that, you know, he was comfortable with the closing and everything. So that all worked well. Uh, here is the closing package from the title company. Uh, just a notice of what's called protection coverage uh, that they're required to uh, give away now, basically saying, or not give away, but sell, uh, saying that if we buy the property, 
closing protection coverage is basically insurance in case the title company goes out of business or something like that while they uh, while they have my money, you know, while they have uh, the funding. All right, so this is the closing protection coverage, which I did not buy. Uh, here is the, you know, the letter I got from the title company uh, setting up escrow. Here's a, uh, a comp down the street, actually. I remember I bought this property for 30000 Here's a comp down the street for one oh one nine. This house is in perfect condition. My house is in perfect condition. So anybody that says that uh, you know you can't find good deals out there is wrong. Um, I obviously bought this house for 30% of what this other guy is asking for his house down the street, on the same street. Um, and anybody says that says that short sales are dead, short sales don't work, they're also misinformed. Um, I, I definitely, uh, still right now, uh, my brokerage office has about 80 listings. Uh, about 50 or 60 of those are short sales uh, right now. And we're facilitating a lot of short sales for clients, uh, for a fee and for a commission. And uh, I'm making offers on a number of those to buy them. So that's exciting. Uh, this next document is actually my wiring instructions. Here's the wiring instructions from the title company to wire my money. Um, I actually had to wire in $29,706.06 uh, to buy the property, so I wired that in. Um, bought it for 30 had some closing costs, but then also got some concessions back for property taxes. And then finally, uh, here's the uh, disclosure form that I filled out to list the property and resell it. Uh, so this property just went back on the market a week ago. Uh, I, I sat on it for about three or four weeks trying to figure out if I was going to keep it as a rental because it already had a tenant in it um, or if I was going to just try to resell it. Um, turns out uh, I, I want to resell it. Um, it's easily worth uh, $70,000, $80,000 right now and uh, I have it listed for sixty four nine. and I have some buyers that have been through it who are interested in it and I have a buyer going through it this afternoon. So. We might be able to sell it quickly and make about twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars on the house. We'll see what happens. Okay, so I want to go up on the whiteboard real quick and show you guys uh, show you guys uh, kind of the numbers from the transaction. So uh, the seller owed uh, one thirty-five. Let's see, and they were current on the loan. Uh, was listed for I believe 55 okay um, and you know the house when the tenants were in there doesn't look nearly as good as it looks now a uh, little bit sloppy a little bit messy tenant inside of the property so listed for 55 my offer was 30 gross and 21,000 net to the bank okay so the um, the bank they were owed 135 and they accepted twenty one thousand dollars and uh, there was no deficiency judgment the homeowner was not responsible for paying back any of the difference so the bank took a hundred and ten thousand dollar loss okay okay BPO is done bank got their own independent third-party appraisal uh, BPO was done. BPO came in at 45. Counter offer went back and forth, and they accepted my offer of 30. Okay. So since then, we've gone out. We've cleaned up the property. The tenants have been moved out. Uh, we cleaned up the carpets, cleaned up the kitchen. We painted a few rooms, and now the property is listed. Okay. For 64.9. Okay. Now, the great thing about this is that you know, we put the property on the market looking for a buyer. Nobody was showing up uh, to see the property at the time within the first couple weeks at 55. Uh, we had some people that wanted to look at it, but because there was a tenant in it, it was you know a little bit of a pain in the butt to show it. Uh, but we definitely know this thing is easily worth 75 or 80 grand. Just with the tenant in there, it was really difficult to set showings up. 
Um, so after a couple weeks, we decided to get, get an offer in. I decided I wanted to make an offer on this property to buy it. Um, so right now, now it's vacant, cleaned up, painted up, carpets are fixed up, and it's at 64.9, and it's vacant, and it's listed. Okay? So what we, do, what we want to do here is obviously we can sell the property outright. It looks like the buyers that are interested in this property are going to be a husband and wife with small kids. Um, there's been a couple landlords that have been looking at it who want to buy it and cash flow it. Because here's the thing. The rent rate that the former tenants were paying is $9.25 a month. Okay? All right. So if somebody, let's say somebody buys this house for me for $55,000. Just as an example, okay, buyer at 55, okay, and let's say they pay all cash, all right, if they buy the property and they pay all cash, all right, so at 925 a month, okay, which is, let's just check and see real quick how much rent that is per year, 925 times 12, okay. It's $11,100 in rent, okay? You can see that just the difference between these numbers, if they pay cash at 55 and they got $11,100 a, a year in rent, obviously there's gonna be some expenses for property taxes, about $2,200 in property taxes, uh, $400 a month for, or $400 a year for insurance, and let's say another $500 a year in maintenance. You know, maintenance and things like that, cleaning the property up, vacancy rates, etc. Net income looks like to be about eight thousand dollars. Okay, so if you take the eight thousand dollars that somebody were to get after the rents, and property taxes, insurance, and maintenance, and apply all of this to their purchase price, okay, it's only going to take somebody about, uh, let's say, seven years. Okay, and they will own it free and clear. Okay, so a great investment for somebody else. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do with this particular property is to, uh, to sell it either to an owner-occupant or a landlord. Uh, right now it's listed at 64.9. I imagine we'll sell it somewhere around 55. I'm going to get a good deal on that. I'll make after closing costs and expenses, I'll make over $20,000. They'll get a good deal on it because it's probably worth seventy to eighty thousand right now, and based on this calculation, they'll own it free and clear in just seven years. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to take you out in the field right now, and uh, let's go see it. We're going to go out to uh, Marmore Drive. I'll take you inside. Let's roll. So I'm uh, rocking the purple today, and one of the reasons I'm rocking the purple is uh, we're shooting this video. It's Wednesday, September. Uh, 19th and uh, I'm rocking purple because it was a year ago today that uh, I was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. It's been a wild year for sure, but uh, I, I've been blessed to you know overcome the uh, the diagnosis. I had a, obviously most of you know about my surgery and everything what happened with that surgery, and uh, you know the color of most of the. Uh, the organizations that support pancreatic cancer and research is purple and I was able to speak at their uh, annual fundraiser which is the pancreatic cancer action network back in uh, June uh, I was the featured speaker the keynote speaker there and their colors are purple so we're rocking the purple today we're uh, representing thanking God for a good life and a lot of great lessons learned over the past year so let's jump in the car and we'll head over to the property cool guys so um you know, one of the things, questions I get all the time from people is, is about funding. Is, you know, how do I get funding for my deals? How do I get money? Um, and the truth is, is that I fund all my deals with private money. Um, I very rarely use my own money to fund transactions. Even though I could, I don't. Um, for the most part, I use private funds. And these private funds, you know, a lot of people have, I think... Uh, a little bit of uh, anxiety of how do I raise money, how do I talk to people about money, those kind of things. And I can understand that. I can understand that you know talking to friends, talking to family about money and about investments is maybe a little bit weird for some people. And I think that's just up in your mind. It's something that you need to overcome mentally because 
when you have something that can enhance and benefit uh, your family, your friends, um, and the people around you where they can earn a much higher interest rate and a much better rate of return on their investments than they can get anywhere else, I feel you have a moral obligation to offer it to them, okay? So take, for example, you may have an aunt, you may have an uncle, you may have a friend, you may have uh, you know, one of your high school buddies, college buddies, whatever. And people are changing jobs so often now that they often have an old 401k at their old job. And I'm finding today that people just aren't even paying attention to that money. They're not paying attention to the old 401ks that they have with old companies. So it seems like everyone I talk to, people from in their early 30s up until into their 60s, they have this money kind of sitting around and they don't take it very seriously. As a matter of fact, a lot of my personal buddies, they never even look at it. They, they, they never even bother. They just say, well, you know, I'm not gonna touch that money for 30 years, so you know, it's just gonna go up and down with the market. And I say, look, for you, you know, that fifty thousand, that hundred thousand, that you know, two hundred thousand dollars, is you know, money that's thirty years away. But if you can get a, a twice the interest rate, or you can get a double-digit return, or you can get twelve percent, fifteen percent on that money compounded over the next uh, twenty, thirty years, they could potentially have hundreds of thousands of dollars more than by not paying attention to those investments. So I feel I have a moral obligation to talk to my friends and my family and people in my network about their investments because I know that the strategies I use to buy and sell real estate is going to benefit them just as much as it's benefiting me. And I, you know, when I, when I meet with somebody and they don't take their investments very seriously, I'm not surprised but I feel I have a moral obligation to educate them on what to do. So it's all really up here, it's all in your mind. Um, it, it's not about like, hey, I'm going and I'm begging for money. It's, hey, I have an investment strategy or an opportunity to be an investor or be a lender. Well, you will earn substantially more money than you will in the stock market, precious metals, CDs, bonds, annuities, etc., etc. So it's all a mindset. So that's how I fund all my deals. That's how I funded this deal on Marmore Drive with a private lender who I'm paying 10% interest to. That's it, just 10%, all right? She's not asking for a piece of the deal. She's not asking for an outrageous amount of money, just 10%. We're able to fund the deal quickly, have cash, close on it, close on it fast. We made the bank happy, the short sale lender happy, and now we're able to uh, fix the property up a little bit and put it back on the market. All right, so we have lots of trainings and lots of things we've put out there about private money and about raising private funds. And um, I'm thinking about launching a coaching program where we're for, for a four week or a five week or a six week uh, time frame, we will focus on nothing but raising capital and funding deals. So what I'd like you to do after you watch this video is send an email to my office, send an email to coaching at shreknow.com, coaching at srecnow.com, and tell us if you'd be interested in learning about how to raise all the capital you ever, would ever need to fund your real estate deals. So send us uh, your first name, your last name, your email, your phone number, and tell us how you wanna learn that information. Do you wanna learn face-to-face -face, uh, in a live event? Do you wanna learn in maybe a small mastermind group? Do you wanna come to my office or I can work with you personally for a couple days, or would you wanna learn from a online, uh, web-based, uh, four-week or six-week coaching program, okay? Where we would teach you over a couple of weeks, uh, give you unlimited email support, unlimited phone support, um, and teach you how to raise all the capital you've ever needed. So send us an email, coaching at shreknow.com, and uh, let us know if that's something you'd be interested in. And if it is, we'll work on putting a program together for you. All right, so we'll be out to the house in a second, and we'll see you there. All right, let's go inside and check it out. This is a 3-1 three, three bungalow, and uh, you can see, I mean, the house is really clean, really nice inside. I mean, just, you know, regular uh, laminate tile flooring, small kitchen, little pantry, stuff like that, you know. Um, you know, nothing outrageously nice, but... 
you know, thirty thousand dollar investment in a you know sixty to eighty thousand dollar neighborhood. So um, you can sit back here. It's bedroom number one. You know, just uh, two bedrooms on the first floor here. Little closet for clothes and stuff. You know, it doesn't need any work at all. Nice clean carpets, fresh paint. We're good there. Bedroom number two. This has a little bit, you know, a little bit bigger closet back here, but you know, put your clothes in there. Bedroom down here, just enough room in here for, uh, you know, probably a queen or, or a double sized bed. And then you got the bathroom here, nice tile flooring. You know, um, you know, just kind of your standard standard deal. You know, bed, bath, couple beds down here, and then the, the upstairs is really nice in the basement as well. But upstairs is basically a full finished area really big nice room up here you know this is basically your master bedroom area and uh, a little bit of a closet back here some people can put up there you know hang some clothes and stuff but that's not something you'd really use um, but yeah I mean huge room in here bed you know hang your clothes doesn't have any closets up here so technically um, you know, the MLS wouldn't consider this a bedroom, but it is, you know, it's it obviously it's somebody's gonna use this for a bedroom up here. You just need to put up some, some, uh, you know, cabinets, uh, some closets, some, some place to hang, hang clothes. But this is a huge space up here that um, just about anybody who would buy this house would, would obviously have this as their master bedroom. So uh, a lot of space up here for sure. People love it. So this side of the basement obviously is the utility side. Um, utility tub, furnace, hot water tank, etc. You know, storage, stuff like that, no big deal. But very clean, very nice, very new electric box in the back, nothing to do here. You know, no, nothing to worry about as far as, you know, water intrusion or anything wrong with the foundation. And then on this side in the basement, this is great, right? So somebody could use this side of the basement as a, an awesome entertaining area. They got built-in bar, not they got, I got. This is my house. I got a built-in bar, right? So somebody can have fun with this. There's obviously some storage up here. Like a little, you know, just a toilet down here. It's not even a full bath, but there's a toilet down here in case somebody wanted to, you know, entertain down here and have a bathroom. So, um, I mean, just a great, great little house for $30,000 in a $70,000, $80,000 neighborhood. You can't beat it. So uh, we're definitely looking to sell this property as quick as possible. Went on the market about a week ago. We've had a number of showings. We're going to show it again this afternoon. And, uh, you know, like I said, this thing's easily worth, you know, 60 to 80 grand all day. Happy to unload it uh, for, you know, between 55 and 65 uh, because of what I paid for it. Obviously paying $30,000. we got a lot of room in here to make some, some really good money. So uh, looking forward to doing this deal. So again, guys, now that you've seen this next case study of mine, um, we're really thinking that we want to put together a, a specific training program for you on how to raise all the capital that you've ever needed. Not transactional funding, not hard money, but private money, inexpensive private money. So if you'll just let us know if that's something you'd be interested in, send us an email to coaching at srecnow.com. That's coaching at shreknow.com. And uh, let us know if that's something you'd be interested in. Tell us your first name, last name, email, phone, and then let us know how would you want us to deliver um, a funding and capital raising training program to you? Do you want to come to my office and meet with me one on one? Do you want to do a live event where there's you know a couple hundred people there and learn in a big group setting? Do you want to have a small group mastermind where we would meet uh, for a weekend in a small group, maybe 12, 15 people, or? Would you want to meet through an online coaching program for three to six weeks where we kind of show you everything that we do to raise capital? Uh, we've raised millions and millions of dollars to fund deals, uh, and we want to show you how to do it too so you can uh, you know, be successful with real estate. There's lots of good deals out there. There's deals like this one everywhere. You just got to have the money to fund them, okay? So appreciate you watching the video today. Send us an email to coaching at Shrek now. And we'll talk to you soon. Take care.